Now, the first words or the first thing that the believer in God must accept when introduced to God is that he is all wise and is the best knower of his creation. So the first words that the reader of the Holy Quran is introduced to after the opening chapter, which is a prayer, are these words, I, Allah, am the best knower. Wow. We say that God is omnipresent. He's omniscient. omnipotent. He's all-knowing. Then our journey of faith begins with those words, I, Allah, am the best Noah. Faith is having complete trust in someone. Faith is the unquestioning belief that does not require proof or evidence. Unquestioning belief in God, complete reliance, complete trust, complete confidence in God. So the believer in God <clears throat> is going to be tried by the things that God does, the things that God permits, that from our ignorance or limitation of knowledge, we just do not understand. Then in our limited understanding of things and in our own sense of what is right and just, we end up judging God. And that's where we get in trouble. God doesn't mind you and I asking him, but to pass judgment is a grave offense with God. So this story of Moses' travel with the wise man is so informative. It teaches many lessons of faith, patience, and the ego. So I thought for most of our listeners who are unfamiliar with this beautiful story, I think I would like to read it for you very quickly. And it deals with Moses' travel in, certain knowledge, uh, in, in search of knowledge. And Moses met a wise man. And Moses asked the wise man if he could follow him. And he wanted the wise man to teach him in the good that he had been taught. But look at the wise man's response to Moses. He said, how can you have patience with me when you do not have a comprehensive knowledge? Think about that. But Moses said, if Allah please, you will find me patient, nor shall I be disobedient. So the wise man said, all right, here are the conditions. If you follow me, question me in nothing until I myself speak to thee about it. In other words, watch, learn, don't question me until I speak to you about what I'm going to do. So they set out and they embarked on a boat and the wise man put a hole in the boat. And look at what Moses said. He said, have you put a hole in this boat to drown its occupants? What you have done is a grievous thing right then and there. The first test, Moses failed. The wise man told him, don't ask me anything. And 
until I speak to you. But in the first act, Moses, he didn't even question him. Maybe he would have got off if he would have at least asked, excuse me, sir, could you tell me why you put that hole in the boat? But no, he judged him. And he said, what you have done is a grievous thing because what the wise man did according to Moses' limited sight. See, God is a far-reaching, a far-seeing God. So what he judged in the present with his limited understanding, he couldn't see what was coming down the road. Nevertheless, the wise man said, all right, I told you you wouldn't have patience with me. And Moses, you know, he checked himself. Oh, blame me not for what I forgot. And don't be hard on me for what I did. So the wise man said, okay, let's go. And then they went on in their journey. And then they met a boy. And guess what the wise man did? He slew the boy. Oh. Now, if the putting in the, a hole in the boat to drown the occupants <laughs> was a grievous thing in the eye of Moses, now he kills a boy. And Moses said, now he asked him, but it's in a judgment. Have you slain an innocent person? Not guilty of slaying another? Because the boy had not yet grown up. Now, he didn't know. I mean, you know, boys today kill. So he didn't know if he was really innocent or not, but he judged. And then he said to the wise man, what you have done is a horrible thing. Uh-oh. Now the wise man says, didn't I tell you not to say anything to me? And didn't I tell you that you could not have patience with me? So Moses said, oh, oh, oh. again now, he, please forgive me. And if I ask you about anything after this, keep not company with me. You will indeed find an excuse in my case. So they went on until when they came to the people of a town and they asked its people for food, but they refused to entertain them as guests. Then they found in it, in the city, a wall which was on the point of falling. So he put it in the right state, the wise man fixed up the wall. And Moses said, if thou had wished, thou couldst have taken a recompense for it. So he fixed something that the city had not fixed. Now, money. Man, look, man, shoot. That was a very kind and good act that you did. You should be rewarded for that. That reveals something else that the wise man and what he was doing is manifesting. And the thing when you walk with God, you have to understand that the things he does is to manifest what is hidden to you, hidden to me that we don't even know is present in our breasts, in our hearts. It is only when a circumstance is created, it manifests what is hidden. So Allah says in the Quran, I know what you manifest and I know what you hide. So Allah does things to manifest the things that are hidden even to ourselves. Let's go on. But after he fixed the wall and Moses said, you could have asked something, for doing this, that's when the wise man said, that's it. I'm through with you, man. It's over. 
I ain't going another step further with you. You have reneged <laughs> on every turn. That's it. And this is the parting between me and you. But before I leave you, I'm going to inform you of the significance of that, that you did not have patience. As for the boat, yeah, I put a hole in it. He didn't say it like that. That's, it belonged to poor people working on the river. And I intended to damage it, for there was behind them a king who seized every boat by force. And as for the boy that I slew, his parents were believers, and we feared lest he should involve them in wrongdoing and disbelief. See, he saw what the boy, if he was allowed to live, would grow up to become and would cause grief to righteous parents. So we intended that their Lord might give them his place once better in purity, one better, pardon me, in purity and nearer to mercy. So God took what didn't even belong to the parents. Oh, this is, this is, this is hard. He is the author and the rightful owner of life itself. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. And as for the wall, it belonged to two orphan boys in the city, and there was beneath it a treasure belonging to them. And their father had been a righteous man, so thy Lord intended that they should attain their maturity and take out their treasure and mercy from thy Lord. And I did not do it of my own accord. That's powerful. See, I'm a wise man that's being guided by a higher power. I didn't do this of my own accord. God is directing me. God is ordering my steps. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said of this story of Moses travel in search of knowledge with the wise man is a picture of his followers and how his followers followed him with doubt and suspicion. Whenever God gives you a wise man, He's always going to do things that go against your understanding of revelation, your interpretation of revelation, your understanding of what is right. And the only thing missing with Moses, as the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, it wasn't patience that he was lacking, it was faith. So every event or circumstance or trial in one's life, it demands greater faith in the God with whom you give your trust and confidence.